Uh, my name is Jonas Stadesse and I work in the areas of humanoid robots, smart material structures, soft robotics uh, and uh, uh, modeling of these systems. So uh, starting from the humanoid robotics, uh, these robots are those robots that look like human, they behave like human and they can perform articulated movement. So they are used to us, they can be used to assist human beings in many ways, such as for uh, health care, for education, for military, for many applications. So my approach right now is looking at from general perspective to deploy this robot in many areas. That's one of them. Uh, the second one, biometric robots or bioinspired robots, uh, we learn from nature and then try to create synthetic material by taking the principles of nature to apply to this robot so that we get benefit from these robots. Uh, and when it comes to smart material structure, these are the, the special class of materials that respond to multiple stimuli, for example, temperature, uh, for example, light, uh, for example, um, mechanical force. Uh, uh, so what makes my, um, my research interest in this area is that uh, I like to build things. I, I enjoy doing <laughs> so that, and I, I really like to see robots performing different unique behavior. So, and I read papers, I, because of that, uh, so, somehow I get inspired if working on this area. So how I uh, approach in the design and development of human robots. So basically to design human robots, it starts from the goal of that project. So the, the, all these robots are designed specific to certain goals. So looking at the, making a certain specification, we come up with the mechanism, we come up with what kind of actuation technologies should use and how uh, these robots should articulate in order to demonstrate that particular function. So these are, there are multiple guidelines we will look at on how we design these robots, including the power usage, whether it is standing or whether it's for standing and walking and performing things or using a mobile base to perform something. So considering this specific application, we'll look at the the key components that are part of the you know mechanical engineering and electrical engineering departments of, uh, and from computer science because robotics involves all these disciplines. Uh, yes, the key advancement in the areas of uh, uh, human robots and um, and soft robots is in general materials. Material is the key comp component or the key enabler of. Uh, advancement in technologies. For example, when it comes to soft robotics, we do have, uh, in our lab, we manufacture very soft, highly elastic material that can elongate up to more than 1000% by applying just little amount of force, which is very important for advancement in soft robots or humanoid robots with facial expression because we use this kind of soft material to create the to mimic soft tissue so this brings advancement so for example the advancement we have seen in the human robots is the sophia the robot yes. which shows facial expression and emotion it's because of the material that that enables such advancement so uh, that's the first thing that i will emphasize and this soft material uh, can bring dramatic improvement in industrial setting because this soft material can delicately hold object without breaking it because they are soft compared to the traditional robot which are rigid uh, and can damage the, the components. Uh, so uh, material is the key enabler for that. So the question how the future humanoid looks like and how they impact the society, uh, it's difficult to predict the future. Uh, uh, but having uh, uh, working on this area for a while, um, uh, uh, so this human robot will be deployed in, in 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 household in every household. Like similar progress we've seen in cell phone progress that everyone has cell phone and interact. Now 
In the future, these human robots will be in, hu in, in the household. They will interact uh, with, with a human being in many ways, not only in a household, but in many service areas. Now, um, so probably I may have a copy of my robot also everywhere else. So now people may, may not know, is this the robot or is it the real person? So these kind of issues will come. But definitely, they will be. In, they will be. We'll, we'll be seeing them in areas in a hospital. The, those I'm talking about. Those robot that looks like human, that behave like a human. They can show emotion, facial expression, emotion, and explain and communicate in a humanly manner. So these robots will come for sure. But the, there are many challenges, and this progress is very slow. It's enormous problems from material, from controlling it artificial intelligence, uh, how do you manufacture them? And the cost is very expensive too. So there are complicated issues, but we are directing towards that areas. Yeah, uh, in what way I uh, engage students in research, uh, basically students are very interested in robotics in general, it's engaging. So they like to build robots, they like to make them, create a CAD file, 3D print them and then put actuator sensors and controllers and then test them. So they naturally they engage and I get a lot of emails to, to, to be involved in the HBS lab. Um, so what I do is basically I send them papers to read and we also share videos of the robots. So uh, they get engaged uh, when they see the action of the robots, especially I bring students to visit the lab, even from my class, I bring all the students in my lab and to see what is the current state of the art research performed. So they somehow get engaged in this. So uh, this is one aspect. And I also make them to collaborate each other. Uh, so create a, an atmosphere so that, you know, undergraduate and graduate students uh, work together to learn from each other. Um, and, and basically, uh, this is how I engage them, reading papers. Mm -hmm. So what advice I should give for uh, aspiring students to get involved? Um, the first thing is these days, everything is available online. I emphasize on self-learning. The first thing is self-learning. These days you can search in, uh, in online resources and learn or educate yourself. And once you are educating yourself, and reading also published papers, um, um, uh, that's the first step I will say uh, to get engaged in this area. So educate yourself and then learn practical experience because these days we, may, uh, the, the practical experience is, uh, is not as expected from students, grad fresh graduates especially if they are not exposed to laboratory based skill. And I will say, once you educate yourself, get engaged in a research laboratory uh, in, in, in many ways and have an experience, practical experience, and uh, be part of the community. That's how I would say. And then read. I must emphasize, read, read, read. This is the advice I'm giving for everyone.